Well, good afternoon, everybody. Today, we're going to be doing a review of the Garmin 1030. This is considered the ultimate smart GPS cycling computer by Garmin. Now, I've had them all as far as Garmin. I've had pretty much everything on the Edge series from the 300 to the 500 to the 520 to the 530 to the 830 to the 820. So I'm also going to be going over to Bontrager Lights, how they hook up with this, and also the HRM. That's the dual... Uh, HRM heart rate monitor that I've had multiple times and why I decided to go from the 820 to the 830 and back again to the 1030 for the first time. So this was on sale at REI for four, right, right around 425 I paid 399 as the base price. It was on sale, I believe, from 699 or 799 Now I was having some problems with my 820, so I called Garmin, which was still covered underneath the original factory warranty they replaced that and i decided i'm going to be selling that on ebay for anywhere from two to three hundred dollars depending on what i can get for it along with a heart rate monitor so at the end of the day this thing will only cost me right around a hundred dollars uh, when i get done selling everything so i've used this for right around a week now i want kind of want to give it a test go before i kind of gave a review on it and it's so far been really good. Uh, it's got some quirks. It's got a couple of things going on to it. And I'm going to be getting into that too. And Garmin Connect is great on this. So Garmin always has great packaging. I'm a big person on packaging. As you guys know, it's a beautiful box. Um, Gar Garmin's Garmin. I've been with them for years. They, they're great on warranty and everything. So let me just get into it real quick. Put the box to the side. This is just the instructions. Nobody reads those anymore. And here we go. Here's the heart rate monitor. Let me kind of put the box to the side. Get that. Get into that in a second. So as we kind of see everything here, let me get to the main screen. Of So I call everything leg day per se. So as we get into it over here, uh, I'm going to get into the sensors real quick here. So my connected features, my sensors. So my sensors are all here. That is part of the ETAP system. As you can see, the sensor details, the calibrate it. And then you can get into basically anything about, and the battery status says good. So that means my current status on my front unit is good. Let me go back over here. And I also have the power meter, which typically it'll show right away my battery level. Now it's not connected because it just disconnected, but you can see the battery level too right away. I'm going to go back over here, and here's the, I'm sorry, here's the part rate, the heart rate monitor. Sensor details, it tells you everything over here. It tells you also the Bluetooth, whether it's connected or not, but more importantly, what the battery level is. So I'm going to connect the lights real quick. These are the Bond Trigger lights. I'm going to turn that on. So these are the Bond Trigger lights that you can get right over here. And they go on right away, which is really, really nice. So this is the rear one, this is for a Trek Madone, and this is the front one, again, for a Trek Madone SLR. And this is the adapter you get when you buy the Trek Madone, so it pretty much goes in uh, right over here, which is really nice, just snaps right in. But what's nice about the lights is that you can kind of control everything right over here from the lights. You can control the auto deceleration, the light mode, it tells you what the battery level is, it tells you when your battery is getting low. Also with the SRAM ETAP, it tells you when your battery is getting low and the different types of gearing uh, that you're in. So that's something I really, really like. So if these are sitting somewhere, I highly recommend that you turn it off over here because this one can get really hot and it actually kind of melted something it was in front of. But these Bond Trigger lights are great. Uh, this is the 1300 Lumen. I don't know what it is on the back, but they are absolutely uh, phenomenal. It's a little bit heavy, but it works great. Now, as far as the overall unit, what I really like is the bigger display. Let me bring in the 820 real quick here. This is my 820 that I've had for years. I'm going to let that turn on. So, for example, right now, this is the brightest it can be on, and this is the brightest this one can be on. So even though this is a newer model, this is an older model, this is still brighter. Now, the 830, I believe, is even brighter. The touchscreen on the 820 is honestly horrible. That's one reason why. I don't really like it. I'm going to shut this off real quick because it's trying to connect to all the different power meters and everything. So okay, let me go back over here. 
So the connected features, which are really nice, you could have your phone connected, which is great. This is connected right now on my iPhone SE. What's also really nice is if you have Garmin Connect on your phone, you can log into Garmin Connect and download any of the different data screens, which I'll get to in a minute, on your phone right away. So let me get to my activity profiles over here. I just call it leg day. And let me kind of start something real quick here. So let's just start, say I started, now the lights just went off. So let me kind of turn this over here so we don't see the lights going off. But that's pretty much light. So as soon as you turn on your Garmin, if you have the lights hooked up and you don't have the sensors off, they will go off right away, which is kind of annoying, but kind of good if you're riding at night. This is the one um, one widget that I really like. It's just a graph. It kind of tells you the cadence, the slope, my average power, my max, my three-second power, and also my overall. It also tells you the gearing. So if you have Axis, ETAP, or I'm assuming Durace, it's going to give that to you too. That's just a road I'm on. These are just some significant settings that I like to do. Distance, speed, elevation, right around 4,200 feet. We're in the mountains right now. And that's just another data screen. Uh, so right over here, it tells you what your light battery is, what your gear battery is. Uh, it's not hooking up right now. And then it also tells you the light mode is auto. And if you want, you can actually change that in a different setting. So it's two lights connected. Those are just some more custom screens that you can do. That's the battery level, calories. Uh, this is just another custom screen you could have on Garmin Connect. Now, I love Garmin Connect and some of the features they have with that. This is the power phase. So what's nice about this screen is if you have a power meter that reads left and right, it actually will tell you the left and the right wattage. And it, so far, it's been insanely accurate. I'm kind of surprised that my left leg is stronger than my right leg considering my left leg is the one that's been giving me the problems on and off uh, for years. This is a nice little screen over here too. This is just a power screen. Kind of gives you power distributions of uh, what you're doing. My peak power so far ever on a bike has been a couple years ago. That's when I was lifting a lot more. I was right around uh, 1,500. Now I top out right around 1,300 or so. It really doesn't bother me too much until we get back into the gym. This is another one of my favorite screens over here. This is just another part of Garmin Connect. Tells you miles per hour, uh, your HR, your cadence, your ascent, your descent. Now, I do a lot of climbing, so I definitely like to see the ascent and the descent, and especially uh, the climb feature over here. I don't think I have anything else set up. That's probably This is probably one of my favorite screens over here because I have cadence, I have slope, we have power, max power, because I tend to do a lot of intervals. So let me go back to the other screen real quick. Let me get out of this. Now, the touch sensitivity on this is awesome. It's a lot better than the A20. The A20 does have its problems. The biggest thing is probably the touch sensitivity. Now, you do get a lot more options on the A30. It's better, but I just couldn't justify spending the price of, I believe, it was $399 on the A30. They discontinued the A20, and I believe the A30 now replaces the A20. You could also see some of your stats, which is really nice. That's just VO2. You can see your stress score, personal time records, your user profile. Let me get back over here. Uh, you can see your training log. You can have your, your Strava live segments, which is really nice too. That's one of my favorite features of Strava live segments. And then there's, uh, you can set a target. You can do a race activity. Uh, with the Strava live segments, let me see if it'll come up. Now, there's something of a climbing feature on this, too. I guess it's big for mountain biking. So this is the Garmin IQ. Since we have an activity in process, we can't actually see anything. Let me see if I stop the activity, if we'll actually do anything. Let me just save the ride real quick. And then if it's hooked up to your smartphone, this will actually go straight up into the cloud, and it'll hit Strava within literally a couple of seconds. So let me get back into the IQ. So... It's not really showing anything, but I don't think it's hooked up to my phone right now because I'm actually using my phone as a hotspot for for my Garmin. Let me hold on. I think I just got a notification that it's that it's doing something. So, okay, and then you can go through your history too. That's just all your rides. These are just a couple of rides from the last couple of days. It's actually hooking everything up from Garmin Direct because this was a new unit, which is nice. You can kind of go back in. It loads the ride. It kind of tells you your segments and your time zone 
overall. So as far as the overall display, I'm really liking the display. I didn't think, I knew I was going to like the display, but the only thing I don't like is how not bright this is. This is on the highest setting right now, um, and this is on the highest setting right now. So you can kind of see the difference, even though the 8 series is a newer series. They have not updated these in a while from what I understand. But there's something called a uh, hammerhead, and I'm thinking about getting that. But I'm going to give this a kind of a three-month try. So on the top over here, you have your battery level, you have your GPS, you have your Bluetooth. You could also get messages on here from your phone, which is nice. That's if you have it turned on. I tend to turn it off just to save the battery life on my phone. And I really don't want to be looking at a message while I'm riding just in case something happens. And then this is all your power units over here. The navigation is... For the most part, it's pretty good. It's a lot more accurate than this one, than the Garmin 820, and you can kind of see where you're at. It, it's For Garmin, it's extremely accurate. For a smartphone, it probably wouldn't be that good. Let me go back real quick here. You also have courses you can have. You can have saved trips, saved locations. Uh, the navigation has been really nice. Uh, but overall, I'm really happy with Garmin in general. This is a little bit big. It barely fits on the Trek Modellin. You kind of have to adjust the front part, which is really similar to this. And then you don't have to have it all the way down. You can kind of have it at an angle. But like I said, once you get used to having a big screen, it's going to be really hard to go back to anything else. This is an example of maybe an early, early, early iPod. That's how big the screen is compared to this. It dwarfs it, um, but the, like I said, the touch sensitivity has been great. The only challenge I've had so far is maybe doing a lap or two or doing a segment when you have to hit these buttons and they're hung up right on the bar. You can actually buy an extra battery pack for this. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need it. The only bad thing about this I've noticed so far about charging, it does not fast charge, and I've tried fast charging this with a USB-C from a USB into a MacBook Pro charger. It doesn't charge any faster or any slower, and it doesn't burn the unit out, which is really nice. But overall, I like the look of this. It matches the bike really good. Garmin's always been extremely consistent as far as that goes. So let me bring in um, what else is included real quick here. I'm going to throw the instructions to the side, bring the box in. This is just a box. It's your typical boring box from Garmin. Uh, you get this, which is just their proprietary a unit you could also hook up um, a gopro here you can buy i believe an adapter which is really nice if this fits on your bike it'll work good but it obviously won't work on a trek madone with the custom bars this is just their usb micro usb i wish this was USB C. I think in the next generation which will maybe be the 1040 there is no speculation on when that will be out i think they'll go like that route these are just the adapters for this over here for example, that's a bigger one. That's a smaller one. They also give you the Allen wrenches, which is nice. And then this is just for your arm in case you actually want to use that part. And then these are just the other adapters you can buy from that perspective. So turn the box over real quick. There's nothing really much on there. Just says the battery life and the display is 3.5. It weighs 123 grams. It Does it feel heavy? Yeah, it feels heavy, but I mean, it's a pretty big unit per se. So couple of my favorite things about this are the Garmin Connect so far. I really like that, that you don't have to go into Garmin Connect on your laptop and then figure out what you want. The Garmin Connect app is right on your phone. You go into there, you pick what you want. It's automatically downloaded here, and you can pretty much cycle through anything. I think I have five presets on here. Again, uh, let me see if the IQ will... No, the IQ is not connecting right now, probably because I have my phone uh, off for that perspective so you also have activity profiles which is really nice i think you could have four or five maybe you could have like an indoor one i just have everything for leg day uh you could you can probably run with this but i wouldn't um battery save mode which is nice i don't use it because i honestly don't cycle for 10 hours at a time you can buy an extra battery for this extended display mode that's if you have a garmin watch and then safety and tracking I don't use any of that. So let me see if there's anything else I can go over. The system, you have display, you have widget management, data recording. Now, 
There's different types of data recording. I don't really know what they mean, like this zero averaging. Then you have cadence and you have the GPS. No problems hooking up with the GPS or anything like that. Uh, I leave the tones on. Now, on the only thing I don't like about this one so far is, for example, on the Garmin 820, I could actually do custom settings of, I think, every quarter mile at a lap or every half mile at a lap. And I really like that, just depending on what I was doing and what kind of speeding I was doing as far as uh, speed work. With this, it only goes every mile. It only goes every mile. So let me bring in the heart rate monitor that they actually, uh, you can buy with it separately or it comes as a kit. Now, I've had several of these heart rate monitors in the past. Kind of put this to the side. So this is the Garmin hrm dual now they have a higher end one but that's more for triathletes it's this is waterproof but that one uh, also does various types of cadence for running and it's waterproof for swimming and it's a different color it's a different type of feel this retails for 69.99 i've had probably 10 or 15 of these over the year and everything is warranted up to a year and i tend to go through one about every six months or so i typically travel with anywhere from two to three of them just because this one isn't working or it doesn't hook up right away, I just like to grab and go uh, with the other one. Now, there is an issue with the 820 with these connecting, and that's the issue I was having when I actually called Garmin uh, from that perspective. So this is what the unit looks like. I'm going to bring this one out in a second. This is what the unit looks like. This is the battery over here. They say the battery lasts right around three and a half years. I don't know if that's true. Uh, because the first thing I think of when my unit starts to go is the battery, but this is kind of a pain. You have to be really careful and cognizant of these screws and how you kind of screw everything in and screw everything out because you can't strip them. Now, this is washable. When I do wash it, I wash it in cold water, and I don't, I don't even dry it in the dryer. I just take it out right away and kind of let it air dry. So the issues that I've had with this over the years is, there is kind of like these metal pieces underneath here and after washing it several thousand times or several hundred times in all the sweat because they do sweat quite a bit you can kind of see the connections uh, start to come out over here this is one sensor so one trick i have with this is every time i put this on i take some saliva i put it over here over here on this sensor on this sensor and also on the last sensor over here the reason for that is sometimes it doesn't hook up right away it could be due to the fact that I have a decent amount of hair on my chest. So that's just something that I've learned in the past that it works really, really well. But all the, like, for example, if your sensor is like this, it has to be like this. Uh, and I've noticed that it, it won't actually go on for some reason. So the other downside of this, if it's too tight, this is only if it's too tight. Let me see if I could actually see, kind of show you. You can kind of see these ripples over here. If it gets too tight, those ripples will kind of form like a small wave and they can be a pain to a point. This is kind of funky to adjust over here, but once you get it dialed in, it's pretty good, and it's always nice when you're losing weight. Because so I've got a big, I think I, my chest is 42 right now with a bit, pretty big back, a pretty muscular guy. It's always nice when I'm getting leaner and smaller, and I can pretty much tell from there. So let me kind of do the unboxing for the HRM Dual. Now I'm gonna also go, so go over some of my warranty uh, with Garmin in general. So this is just the box. These typically will come with this package if you buy the Cadence package too, but since the Cadence is already in the uh, head unit, which is basically just the just a cork, it works fine. Don't have to worry about that. Um, up to 3.5 years, it says. Uh, it's very, very light. You don't even have no, realize you have this thing on. And the water pairing is one ATM. I don't know what that means. Maybe that's one meter. Uh, and you could hook it up to multiple different things. So let me just kind of take this out over here. You just have your instructions over here. And you're going to put that to the side. They always leave this separate because I think what happens is when you actually put this on right away, it'll pair right away and then it'll actually activate the battery. So the issue I was having with the A20, supposedly there's a software issue with these connecting and that's the reason why I was having it. And then I tried those other two on um, my brand new 1030. It didn't work. I called Garmin back up. And so Garmin's great about the warranty. Kind of let me take you through the warranty quickly of what happened here. So with the 820 and the 830 on all the other products, this tends to go after maybe six months to a year. It depends on how much moisture you get in there 
in just the type of environment you're in. I notice when I'm in a really dry climate, it tends to go faster, for example, maybe on the ocean, and that's due to all the salt and everything. And then uh, the screen tends to go a little bit too. You can kind of see the screen starting to do like a screen burn, or it's just not as accurate and bright, and occasionally the buttons do go. So as long as it's under warranty, what they will do is you will call them up, they warranty it right away if it's within a year, and I've actually had stuff out of warranty that they still refurbished and sent me a brand a brand new one. So the process is basically this. You call them up. You have two options. They can send you out a refurbished unit. They charge you the cost of the refurbished unit. When you send it back, that's when you actually get the credit back to your account. Or they send you, um, you send in your unit, and then they send the unit back, and they typically ship it, well, two days. Just to ask, and I've always had two-day shipping, nothing overnight. And as far as the heart rate monitor, I tend to go through maybe one or two a year. And what happens is, is Garmin will warranty these now, but they have a new program to where uh, if you need to get anything warranty, they can send you out the brand new heart rate monitor and then they charge you for it. And then as soon as you do the RMA back, they credit your account. So let me kind of take this out real quick over here. I just wanted to kind of show the difference. This heart rate monitor over here is maybe a couple weeks old. I've not washed this yet. So out of the box, everything feels really good. I mean, if anybody has had Garmin products before, I think they ha they do make the best heart rate monitor. Now they're lower in heart rate monitor, feels a lot different. This is very pliable, it's very bendable, it's very washable. They recommend you washing this once a week. It really depends. I think if you sweat a lot, that's a good idea. But like I said, uh, I don't use warm water. I use cold water just in case. You never know. And I always let it air dry. I don't put this in a dryer, and I highly recommend uh, you uh, stick into that process. So as you can see, it's the same exact heart rate monitor as before. Um, like I said, they make really good stuff. It's very, very adjustable. You just pretty much have to play with this over here. Once you get it dialed in and you get it right, it feels uh, fantastic. Uh, I've never talked to a woman that's had this heart rate monitor on, so I'm not sure exactly uh, how it works. But with guys, if you do have to have a hair or chest, sometimes the connection uh, can be interesting, uh, to say the least. So let me try and think here what else I want to cover. So we covered the Garmin 830. I'm sorry, the 820. I'm not going to really get into this. But what is nice about the Garmin 820, if you're running low on your ETAP, uh, a little sensor will pop up and say that you're running low, which is really nice too. Let me put this to the side. So a couple of things I really like about this. I love the bigger display. I think it's fantastic. Um, it is a little bit heavy. Honestly, you don't even notice the difference on your bike. I think it looks visually great on the bike. And if you have a Trek Madone, like I said, uh, with the newer style SLR handlebars, you're not going to have a problem. You just kind of have to play with the adjustments. The only challenge is... The buttons over here might be a little bit more of a challenge uh, to get to if you decide to hit the lap or anything like that. As long as it's hooked up to your phone, uh, you will get messages, Strava Live, all that fun stuff. Strava, I think, is the best. I think uh, there's some other companies, too, that do live segments, but I think Strava is the best, uh, in my opinion. The only thing I don't like so far, I wish this was brighter as far as the display. Because, like I said, if you have the display compared to the 830, I'm sorry, the 820, that's how much brighter is, and this is on 100%. Now, the 830 is even a little bit brighter. It's a lot more sensitive, but as far as sensitivity, um, you can't go wrong just basically playing around with it, uh, night and day difference. And so this is really nice, too. It'll, hold on a second. This will tell you your profile, your settings, your GPS, what sensors are connected, if your iPhone's connected. Um, those are just some phone numbers. I didn't realize that. You can set a bike alarm. You can find a course. Tells you the uh, the weather, too, which is really nice. I did not realize that. Tells you what the forecast is going to be. I'm assuming this is coming from your iPhone. Uh, that's a segment explorer. And if you have a Garmin watch. So here's the overall for the lights, too. I didn't I didn't see this. You can actually change everything from high beam to low beam to auto to solid to flash to off. And like I said, let me bring those back out real quick. Where did they go? Here we go. 
So I've done a review in the past on this, but not a long-term review. I've only used these a handful of times, but these are extremely bright. And like I said, they have three settings. So if you have this set up on your bike already, like you like to ride at night, the lights will automatically go off as long as the setting is on. And then if you have it off, um, it's going to go off. The battery life on this thing is not the best. If you're riding it at all to the 1300 lumens, it will only last maybe about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, but if you're riding at night, this thing is great. I also use a headlamp, and I'll be reviewing that too. This is proprietary to Trek. This is what they this is what they give to you when you buy the Trek Madone. And then this is just the adapter over here. I don't remember how to actually uh, take it off. Could be this over here. Yeah, here we go. That's just simple, as simple as that. This thing is extremely light. This is obviously heavy. Uh, but the lights are great. I've not had any issues with the lights. And when I have been riding, uh, cars yield to me. So it's not been a problem. So like I said, I've been with Garmin for years. I love their products. They have great customer support. Uh, if anything gets sent out, it's always through Kansas. That's where they're based out of. They also have a customer support team in Tucson, which has been great too. If you have any problems with your current Garmin issues, uh, just let them know. I mean, at the end of the day, we're talking about electronics. And like I said, I wish this would be USB-C, but like I said over here, these are the issues that I tend to have. I'm going to give this a three-month trial through REI, but I think if I can sell this, the refurbished one, for a little bit over $200 and also sell the other heart rate monitor they sent to me as a package, I can probably get $300 through eBay for this. So this will end up costing me a little bit over 100 and something dollars, maybe even $100 period. And I think that's a great deal uh, to keep it just in case I need a backup computer. Now, if you guys have any questions, uh, please let me know. I think I've pretty much covered everything. Uh, you guys go have a good day. Go ride. Oh, and this is what I have to cover still. So what I'm shooting on right now is I'm shooting on an EOS R with a 24 to 105 RF shooting straight down. That's on a Manfrotto lens. I'm sorry, on a Manfrotto tripod. And that's with the X-Pro heads. I'm also shooting on a Canon 80D just in case I need that side shot. We also have a GoPro running just in case I like the time lapse over there. As far as my lights, I'm using um, an MW and an MX light from Aperture. I'm also using the Bowling P1. And then what's also nice about a lot of the Canon products is I have my laptop over here and I can see my live view um, and I can see the, uh, I can basically see everything, which is really nice. And I have the live view with my Canon 80D and also have the live view with the other one. Now as far as my microphone, I'm using a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus as my backup mic. My main mic is a Zoom H6 with a stereo shotgun mic on there. That's the SSH. And I'm also using a stand with a boom arm by Toner. Toner is a company that makes various types of audio products and I'm also using their pop filter. So I'm really, really uh, liking that. Like I said, sorry this has been so long. If you guys have been getting something out of these videos, please let me know. Have a great day. Go ride and enjoy your day. Bye.